God is going to break through in ways that we have never, ever, ever experienced. And I truly believe that with all my heart. And uh, I'm just excited about what all the Lord's doing and, and where he's bringing us to and what he's, his expectation of us in addition to our expectation of what he's doing within our lives, right? So as my husband said, this is the Hebraic year, 5780, and it's the Hebraic year. It's a decade of the mouth. And Lord knows we all have big mouths, some of us, huh? <laughs> Amen, brother. Now, someone wrote a comment and said, we're a Christian church trying to be Jewish. Well, I'd just like to comment on that. We are a one new man church. In Ephesians 2, it talks about the wall of partition has been broken down. We're not trying to be Jewish. We're just embracing our Hebraic culture. And so um, that's where, when, if you make statements like that, you need to study it up before you make a statement and know what you're talking about. But anyway, um, you know, Jesus opened up the door for the Gentiles, right? And so now we have an understanding that these are the feasts of the Lord. It's not the feast of the Jews. It's the feast of the Lord. And so there's so much rich um, history and information in there. And it's, it's, it's like a guideline. It's a guideline for us. And, and knowing the times and seasons and what the Lord is doing. So for this first uh, handout, I mean slide, um, it's the year where obviously we're in the year 2020, but before I do that, how many of you really completed your 21 day fast? I'd like to applaud you because, you know, God looks, watches over our, our faithfulness and, and, and breakthroughs. Anybody have any testimonies or anything you'd like to share? Um, maybe next week <laughs> about, about what the Lord has done. I just know that the Lord has brought me into a deeper place with him. And that was my heart. And, you know, I don't care. Like, I know a lot of us here are very seasoned and we've been saved a long time, but you know, we can always go deeper, right? And, um, but anyway, I just want to applaud you. And I'm just so grateful. It doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to fast as the Holy Spirit leads. You know, but, but it, it, God is just calling us to get every part of carnality out of us. Amen? All of us. So, all right. So we're in a decade of the mouth. This is what a decade of pay, P-E-H, which is a decade of declaration. And it's pay means uh, to command, to speak open and to be present. And I love this portion because, you know, when I got saved, I didn't attend a church. I didn't know where born agains went to church. But what I did learn was to meditate on the word and to get the word in me. And, and you know, I know a lot of you know Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland. And, and, and that's what I cut my teeth on in learning how to decree the word and meditate on the word. And I saw major breakthrough. See, the word is supernatural. And so now more than ever, the Lord is saying to us, we've got to get this thing right. We've got to come out of our soulish realm and stand on the word. It's not about what we feel. It's not about what we think. It's not about, you know, what we're seeing. And, and I know we're human and I know we see and experience all that, but God wants us to get into a place where the word has final say, no matter what. And that God is bringing us into a place of fruitfulness and breakthrough unlike anything we've ever experienced. So it means to command. Listen, God already knows our problems, right? So Everything I'm teaching here today is something that we all know, but we all need to hear over and over again. At least I do. And he knows our situation. And so one of the things Easter and I were talking about the other day was about, you know, when we got saved, there was a, um, it's still out there. It's a book by Jermaine Copeland, and it's Prayers That Avail of Much. Anybody ever have that? Yeah. And what it is is teaching you how to pray the word. It's the word we want to pray. It's not our problems. And so, you know, it's the enemy's job to put the snake in our garden to upset it, to try to get us all kiltered, to get us to, to get where we get in the flesh and we get frightened over what we're experiencing. But God's saying, I, he said, listen, is there anything too hard for me? You know, and so we have to get that in our spirit, regardless of what's going on that Lord, no matter what, I'm not backing down. No matter what, I know who you are because you are faithful and true and you are the great I am. I'm going to tell you something. Now's not the time for us to be walking in any kind of carnality. I mean, we have got to ask Holy Spirit right now, where am I? 
what's happening in my soul. Because if you have a tendency to constantly go back to that place of defeat or self-pity or nothing's going to happen or why, God, is this always happening to me? There's something in your soul that the Spirit of the Lord saying, I want to pull out and I want to help you get into that place of victory. Listen, we all have it. Right? So, you know, and that's what I've been asking. I said, Lord, I don't want anything in me. Uh, what I want is fullness of who you are that I, ch I choose to believe. Now, even though we may have experiences where initially at first you hear something, you may get like a little upset, but you shift. And then you course correct and you get your, your heart back on the word. That's just the way it is. And because how many of us can testify that everything said one thing, but you stood on the word and then boom, breakthrough happened. Just like what you were saying about Daniel. They said he's not going to make it. Well, guess what? He's sipping out of a spoon right now. See, God has final say, not the enemy. And so this time, this season is a decade, and it carries this, this um, uh, it, it, you know, if we are aligned with our heart and mind and soul and strength with the word of God, it carries breakthrough. We're also, the, the word pay in Hebrew carries the value of 80 and translates mouth. And pay is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? And, and that symbolizes overcoming victory. Yeah. So I just want to decree today that we are in a place and we are moving forward and crossing over to overcoming victory. For, you know, the Bible says, consider not, you know, we quote that often, the former things of old. He's saying, behold, am I not doing a new thing? Right? But see, we can choose to say, yeah, but, you know, it's been happening like this forever. Honey, you got to get out of that. That is not something I'm choosing to look at. I said, Lord, you are doing a new thing. And Lord, wherever I came into alignment with, or, or, or just with timing, I don't get it all. I just know that the Lord didn't ask me to get it all. He just wants me to trust me because his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are above our thoughts. That's what the word says. So it means overcoming victories in number 17. And so when you think of the scripture that in Romans where it says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us, conquerors is that the Greek word is nikeo or, or like Nike, and it means one who prevails and gets victory. That's who we are. That's who God has called us to be. So um, when I was thinking about this, and actually I was, I was looking up a lot of the commentaries just on numbers, you know, God, nothing's, nothing's there for, you know, by mistake or just there. They're, the numbers carry a lot of meaning. And so in the 17th month of, of Nisan is when they were crossing over, the Israelites were crossing over to the, crossing the Red Sea onto the promised land. And I thought, man, Lord, if that isn't like us, where we're at, you have the Egyptians behind us. You have the Red Sea like, how in the world am I going to cross over? There is a sinking sea in front of me. How am I going to get crossed over? But God's saying, I'm making a way where there is no way. I am the God who is able to ex do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to that works within us. Do you see how our natural minds... I mean, God created us with a mind, but that's where, again, the word is spiritual and the word supersedes what we're seeing. It's like, Lord, I know what I'm seeing here and everything in the natural says your bills won't get paid. Everything in the natural says you won't get healed or, or you won't have this breakthrough. And, and Lord, the enemy is behind me, but Lord, I don't know how you're going to make a way, but you make a way where there is no way. See, that's a supernatural power of God. And listen, it doesn't just happen. It's not like you're getting your little rabbit's foot and you're holding it up. You have to to become one with the word of God. The word, you have to meditate on the word. Amen. That's what he's asking us to do. God's not the problem. I don't know, somebody is, but, but you know, God's saying to us, get the word in you. So in, in um, the Passion Translation, go back to that other scripture. In the Passion Translation in Psalm 81.10, listen to this, I love the way it's written. It says here, I am your only God, the living God. Wasn't I the one who broke the strongholds over you and raised you up out of bondage? Open your mouth with a mighty decree, and I will fulfill it now, and you'll see. The words that you speak, so shall it be. See, we have to really be careful and understand, and one of the next slides that's going to come up is uh, life and death are in the power of our tongue, one of the slides somewhere. And, um, and in the... In the um, Passion Translation, 
I know you're, you're working with me, Adriel. Don't worry about this. I, I, it's hard for me to follow on that line. Proverbs 18.21 says, the Passion Translation, your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. And a talkative person will reap the consequences. I mean, listen to that. What are you saying over yourself? What are you saying over your family? What are you saying over your job? What are you saying over, you know, your health? Our words are so powerful, they will kill. They will kill or give life. Speak life. Life and death, the Bible says, are in the power of our tongue. And so I want to speak life. I want to believe the words, and I want to harmonize. I want to be aligned with the word of God. I want to be in sync. What's the word say? The word says you're more than a conqueror. It doesn't say you're a failure. The word says that he is powerful. I have his DNA in me. That means I'm powerful. The word says that I have the mind of Christ. You can't be stupid. Because the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. You see? So that's, again, where we have to shift what we're thinking. And, you know, when, when I got saved, I wanted to see results because everything was miserable in my life. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going for it. And, and you know what? I saw the, the miracle working power of God. I experienced it. And it wasn't because I knew someone. It wasn't because I had a prophetic word. I got hold of the word. And I meditated on the word, and I saw major breakthrough. Major breakthrough. It wasn't without a fight. I'm going to tell you, it wasn't without a fight. And, and we'll talk about that. I was reading an article, and I, I, I wrote it somewhere. I have a lot of papers here. And um, anyway, oh, here it is. No, I got it. I got it. I just want to say something. Um, I, I didn't mention it, but this week on Tuesday night in um, our Possessing Your Vessel class, we're going to be talking about inner vows. And that's just another one of those voices inside that you don't even, you're not always aware of, but you might have made this vow as a child. I'm never going to amount to anything. I'll always be a failure. All these things is another form of lying that the enemy does against us. So as Trish was talking about this, just do a little self-examination and say, where could I have gotten you know, tainted? Where am I running on bad fuel? That's, uh, that could actually be stopping me and come out on Tuesday night, you know, you don't have to have been going to all the other classes to still benefit from, from what we're doing on Tuesdays. Thanks. So I was reading this article about all these scientists, and um, there was one of the articles that was Russian scientist that says that they can prove their DNA can be reprogrammed by just our words. Think about that. Then there was another article where it had... Uh, um, scientists from Holland, from Finland, from all over Europe, and where, where they were focusing on when we are speaking positive, when we're speaking words of life, what it does. And so at the conclusion of one of the articles that I read, it said, this is scientists, this was not Christian. It says, when a great number of people get together and they pray or meditate, all focusing on the same outcome, their prayers can change the world. It says, this concept is a known fact. This was, this was secular. So the Lord is telling us to upgrade. See, the enemy knows how powerful our words are. He knows how powerful the word of God is. So if he can get us to back off or to just respond to what's happening and get depressed and say, forget God, doesn't work, he, that's what he wants. Because life and death are in the power of our tongue. Our words are powerful. They kill or they, they give life. What are you speaking? So, Lord, what's in our soul? Lord, is there fear in our soul? Do you think less of yourself? You know, it could be trauma from your past because it does affect us. The Bible says, and I'll quote it sometime later, Adriel, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So whatever's in us is going to come out in, in that, during that trial. But you know that what's so awesome about God, he's not looking to hit you over the head with a hammer. He's saying, just check out your heart. This is what could be hindering you. And that it's like, okay, I have to course correct here, Lord. You know, yeah, I'm having a little problem in this area believing you. That happens. You don't just believe, well, at least I didn't. Just Maybe some do just believe right away. But it took me uh, you know, a while and getting the word in me. But it's so worth it. So in this 2020 season, of, of spiritual vision, 
of decreeing the word of the Lord. What scriptures are you standing on? What's the word of God that's in your heart? Because remember, Jesus framed the world. God framed the world with his words. You read through Genesis 1. Read through Hebrews. You know, he says, I frame the world with my words. We are framing our world with our words. Remember, we are our own prophets over our own lives. What are you prophesying over yourself? What are you decreeing over yourself? So we have to believe that we have a dunamis power within us. Jane Hammond spoke a really good word on um, this year, and she spoke it at um, Glory of Zion, so you can probably get it online, but it's really a good word. And she was talking about the Lord woke her up and said that we are dynamos. And, in, and when he says that in Acts chapter 1-8, that he shall give you power, um, you know, um, in Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the, the world, that word is dunamis, and it's throughout the Bible. It's throughout the New Testament. One of the words is dunamis. The other one's exousia, but it means dynamite, explosive power. See, we have to believe when we're reading that, and you need to speak over yourself and say, I am a dynamite, powerful man or woman of God. I have the spirit of God in me. And the more you say it, your faith is developed, the more you start seeing yourself that way. Remember, when, when, when you're in agreement and in alignment with what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that's when you have breakthrough. Another thing about 2020, when you look up the word 20, it means expectancy and waiting. So they that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed like the eagles. And you're waiting and you're declaring and you're praying. And it doesn't mean you have to wait 25 years. It's just that God, the, the, the fragrance of heaven is faith. And so God wants us to... to Shut our mouths when we need to shut our mouths and speak the word of the Lord when we need to speak the word of the Lord. Sing the songs of the Lord. You know, worship is very powerful. And one of the things that they said in the article was the difference in what happens in our brain and our DNA when we're worshiping, when we're singing. So for those of you who don't like to worship, I'm just saying, you know, if you come in a little earlier, it might help you out. So <laughs> put the worship on. Practice at home. Um, you know, we have to decree and declare the impossible as possible. We have to decree that we're breaking out of all the limitations. But here's the thing. It's not just decreeing. It's being a, peop a person of action. It's also, it's also being obedient to the word of God. It's also listening and asking the Lord, hey, am I stubborn in any area where I'm not even listening to counsel? So you can get off kilter here again. So in a multitude of counsel, there's safety. But where am I not experiencing breakthrough? Well, then if you haven't, then there's, there's the problem with you. And that's what you have to ask the Lord. What am I doing that I'm causing myself to go around that mountain over and over and over and over again? We all have to do it. See, because God's saying to us, I'm inviting you to go beyond. I don't want you to be status quo. I don't want you to be limited. I'm asking you to go beyond. But see, how many of you, if I say that, or to, you want to break out the limitations, you have 14 excuses as to why it won't work? You know, what, what's the deal there? What are you saying? What's your self-talk? Because we need to speak life over ourselves. Our self-talk, if it's not aligning with the word of God, then, then it's a soulish issue. And again, it's like, all right, Lord, I repent because, you know, or it could be habit from your family. Oh, you know, they never thought you'd make it. You never get ahead. You'll never do any better. Do you agree with that? Now, you could in your mind, but you may be saying something else, but that's where everything has to come into alignment. What words are you speaking? Lord, I know it's been a difficult time, and I know I haven't seen breakthrough. How many times have we heard, I have not had a father, and I don't know how to be a good father? Well, he's a good father. Yeah. And the word of God teaches us how to be good parents, right? But that doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck. But it starts with decreeing that thing. Because he says, my words are above your words. My thoughts are above your thoughts. He knows what he's doing well. We can't limit God. So God is inviting us to put our faith in him, not our circumstances. To put our faith in how, like, Lord, I know that you love me so much and you want breakthrough. Okay, Lord, now I'm, 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 I'm putting myself out there. I'm asking you to shine your spotlight on my soul. Show me any areas that I'm off kilter, but God, I want breakthrough. And I'm not staying back. 
Because we are kings and priests, the Bible says in Rome in Revelations 1, 6. He, he called us to be kings and priests, to rule, to decree with authority. It's a judicial term, but to minister unto the Lord, to, to have our altar repaired. Where if you haven't been reading the word, if you haven't been meditating, or maybe you have, and I'm sure most of you have, but go deeper. Holy Spirit, I, I, it's never enough. And, and listen, you can be walking, you, it's, it's however Holy Spirit shows you. You can be in work, you know, uh, I remember Kevin Zadai saying, you know, how he was a, pi, um, a flight attendant, and he said he would pray in tongues all day under his breath. He would just be, you know, praying and praying and praying. It doesn't mean you're limited to just your prayer closet, although that's a really good place to be in. But, but see, God is saying to us, I've called you to be dread champions. I've called you to be mighty, mighty people, not walking in defeat. So I said, all right, Lord, I'm not accomplishing all that I want. What do I need to do? You need to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? Are you judging? Are you, are you talking about people? Are you gossiping? Now, I'm going to tell you, that's going to hold you up. Do you have unforgiveness towards people? That'll hold you up. Do you have unforgiveness towards yourself? That'll hold you up. You know, so, I mean, listen, the devil's not creative. He pulls the same nonsense with all of us. You know, but God's saying, listen, I want you to be this victorious, overcoming, conquering people. Do you believe that? Yeah. If you don't, then you have a problem because yeah. I can promise you won't, you won't be. And so we have to agree with the word of God. So we're going to open up our mouths with a mighty decree. Now I am really going to switch this thing around. All right. So I want to go to numbers where we're, um, in the book of numbers. Now, I don't even know where the heck I put all this stuff. Um, in the book of Numbers, oh, here it is. We see the, um, in the book of Numbers 13. Good. Okay, so for most of us, we know the story that um, Joshua asked all these 12 leaders, he said, I want you to go, he says, pick a leader from each tribe. So we know that they were leaders, okay? And he said, and I want you to go check out the promised land. Check out what's there. And uh, so they did. And let me read to you what happened. It says here, well, no, let me tell you what happened because I didn't type it out. Um, so what happened was they all went to check out the territory, and they were so taken by the giants in the land that they came back with an evil report. Now, how many of you know that right now, even what I'm saying, we all have giants that are before us, right? right. All of us have giants. Now, either we're going to magnify the giant or we're going to magnify the great I am, yeah. that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to that works within us. Amen? So, so what happened was they said, oh, my gosh, it surely is a beautiful land. It's filled with, with honey and milk and, you know, had grapes that were enormous. I mean, it was just amazing. But the giants in the land were there, and, and we're not able to take them. And so in Numbers 13, 30 through 33 here, it says, Then Caleb, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. But the men who had got up with him said, We're not able to go against the people of Canaan, for they're too strong for us. So they gave the Israelites a bad report about the land which they had spied out, saying the land through which we went in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. So there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were in their sight. Now I'm going to tell you, in order for us to break through, you have to get a picture of you, inside of you, of, of how the Lord sees you. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. And I know we know this stuff, but, but a lot of times we still mess up with this. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. If you don't see yourself as the righteous man or woman of God, as a powerful person in the spirit of the Lord, you're going to get your behinds kicked. It's just the way it is. So the way he's saying... They saw us. You know why? Because you project out what you're experiencing. Did you ever be around a person that has a lot of rejection or a lot of fear? You can feel it. You can see it on them. 
And so they said, listen, we're like giants. I mean, we're like grasshoppers. They're going to take us out. Well, listen to the confession of their mouth. What's the confession of your mouth? Giants aren't taking me out. My circumstances that I am standing and trusting the Lord for are not taking me out because God has the final say. There's no equal to our God, and I believe it. But see, that's where, again, our heart, if your hearts are hardened, it's, you're gonna, it's gonna ricochet. Some of you could be sitting there thinking, listen to her, what is she talking about? If that's you, I'm gonna give you a spirit of smack right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. The Holy Spirit saying, listen, I want you to walk in victory. I want you to be the people that are, are conquering, that are breaking through. You don't want to look like you're sucking on lemons all day and, oh, woe is me. Nothing's ever breaking through. Nothing's ever happening. That's not, that's not God. We go through stuff. Don't get me wrong. But God provides a way of escape for every situation we're in. So now if we jump to 1 Samuel 17, let's, let's look at the difference with David and um, Goliath. Now, what I didn't type out, Ariel, is I decided to read it now out of the message version. So, the message version is very street. So, <laughs> I think we'll understand it really well. Um, so, what happened was David, uh, his father, asked him to go and uh, bring food to his brothers, okay? And there was a battle going on for 40 days and 40 nights where Goliath was taunting the people, the Israelites, that, that they were battling. Now, isn't that just like the enemy? Morning and night, how many times you wake up in the morning with that icky thought in your heart, you go to bed, you can't sleep with that thought, that's how he works, taunting them day and night, night and day, day and night, that they were getting really challenged by the enemy. And so David had been anointed, but he was, um, you know, just uh, this mighty kid that, that he was skilled in war. And I'm going to read you out of, um, that's certainly not on my hand out there. In 1 Samuel 16, 18, it says, Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I've seen the son of Jesse, because Saul was asking for somebody to come and play some worship music, because the worship music is what gave him peace. And literally cast the devil on him. See, worship does a lot of stuff for us. And so it says, look, I've seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who's skillful in playing. He's a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech. And, and by the way, he's handsome. And the Lord is with him. So he was cute. So then what happened was, um, um, doesn't hurt to be good looking. Then what happened was he goes to the camp. And, and so... Um, that's why I married my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was in, in 1 Samuel 17, 1, it says the Philistines drew up their troops for battle and they deployed them at Succa in Judah and set up camp between Succa and, and Azekiah, whatever it is. And so th there's this fight going on. Okay. And now it says, a giant nearly 10 feet tall stepped out from the Philistine lines. I'm in 1 Samuel 17, 4, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet. The dude was big. He was a big guy, okay? And so um, then it says here, Goliath stood there and called out to the Israel troops and said, why bother using your whole army? Am I not a Philistine enough for you? And you're all committed to Saul, aren't you? So pick your best fighter and pit him against me. If he gets the upper hand and kills me, the Philistines will become your slaves. But if I get the upper hand and kill you, he said, then you'll be my slave. And so anyway, so for, it says here, it drops down. It says, every morning for 40 days, Goliath took his stand and made his speech. No difference than we're going through a battle. He is constant. He doesn't let up. And so... It says, and I'm going to drop down at verse 24, it says, the Israelites fell back the moment they saw the giant, totally frightened. And they talked among the troops, and they said, have you ever seen anything like it? Because David was saying to them, what the, what's going on? He said, there, he's openly 
Uh, it says here, have you ever seen anything like this man openly and defiantly cha challenging Israel? The man who kills a giant will have its reward. And it tells him what's happening. So David, who was talking to the men standing around him, said, what's in it for the man who kills this Philistine? And he says, who does this uncircumcised Philistine think he is anyway, taunting the armies of God? And so that's how we have to respond. Who do you think you are? I'm the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Leave me alone. And so now here's the thing. Then you go to verse 30, 27. It says, they told him what everyone was saying about the king would do for the man who killed the Philistine. Eliab, his older brother, heard David fraternizing with the men and lost his temper. He says, what are you doing here? And why aren't you minding your own business, tending your scrawny flock of sheep? I know what you're up to. You've come down here to see the sights, hoping for a ringside seat at a bloody battle. And David replied, he goes, what's your problem? He goes, all I did was ask a question. Ignoring his brother, he turned to someone else, asking the same question and got the same answer. Now, let me just say this. When you decide to take a stand... You're going to have even your brothers and sisters in Christ talk to you about how fanatical you are. And aren't you taking this a little too, too crazy? Now you're getting a little too crazy here. See, that's where you need to be with like-minded people that are going to back you up in what your position is. Because when it's a life and death situation, I need to know you're going to pray me to life. When my son, when they said he was dead, I needed my husband alongside. And where we were standing on the word and said, I don't care what the, the thing, the machine was saying. Lord, your word promises that he will live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. See, that's the difference. And so it says here, and then he, you know, and, and so there was that challenge. There's that fight. And so um, now, again, remember, the enemies, the people aren't the enemy. Just you just need to use some wisdom. And so. Uh, and I love that David ignored the other ones that gave him a hard time too. ignore him. Tell the enemy to be quiet. So in verse 31, it says, um, you know, the things was, David was saying were, were picked up and reported to Saul. So then Saul said to him, hey, listen, you know, I want you to come and wear my armor. And, and you know, because David said, I'm going to fight. But listen to this. David, David um, said, I'm ready to go and fight this Philistine. He says, you can't go and fight this Philistine. You're too young. You're too inexperienced. Listen, you can't believe for your miracle. I mean, come on. You guys are crazy. This church is crazy. Yeah. Hallelujah. These people are fanatics. Amen. These people are really on fire for the Lord. Hallelujah. We are not lukewarm. We're not seeker friendly. We are God friendly. And we want the favor of God. Amen. And so um, David said, listen. I've been a shepherd tending sheep for my father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I'd go after it. He didn't run from it. He said, I knocked it down, and I rescued the lamb. And if it turned on me, then I grabbed it by the throat. I ringed, it says ringed its neck and killed it. Lion or bear, it made no difference. I killed it. Sickness, money, children, it makes no difference. It's the same. It's our faith. He says here, and I'll do the same to this Philistine pig who is taunting the troops of God alive. God who delivered me from the teeth of the lion and the claws of the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 7, have no mercy on the enemy. Now, the enemy is not your brother. The enemy is the enemy, okay? But we have to be so resolute in our position and the way we stand and fight and speak. I'm not going to negotiate with the enemy. There's no negotiation. But see, you got to get the word in you. You have to meditate on it. And that's where it's like, who are you talking to? You know, when you start hearing the enemy start chattering, he chatters to all of us. It's like, here's what the word says. Because that's how Jesus, he's our example. It is written. So then... Um, it says, all right, so David, so Saul tried to outfit him and, you know, we all have to have our own walk. I'm telling you what the word of God does, but you all have to hear from God yourself. That's the privilege we all have. And he gives a strategy. So then David said, look, I can't move with your stuff on me. He said, I'm not used to this. And he took it off. And then in verse 40, it says, and David took his shepherd's staff. He selected five smooth stones from the brook. And he put it in the pocket of his shepherd's pack, and with his sling in his hand, approached Goliath. Now, as the Philistine paced back and forth, his shield bearer in front of him, he noticed David. 
And he's like, who is this little punk? This mere youngster, this apple cheek, peach fuzz punk. The Philistine ridiculed David. And he said, am I a dog that you come after me with a stick? And he cursed him by the gods. Isn't that what the devil does to us? Isn't that what the enemy does? Who do you think you are? I'll show you. And so it says, come on, said the Philistine. I'll make roadkill of you for the buzzard. And I'll turn you into a tasty morsel for the field mice. So you see now, it's, it's in, intensifying. And David answered and says, you come at me with a sword and spear and a battle axe. Who, Jesus. He says, but I come against you in the name of God of the angel armies, the God of Israel's troops, whom you curse and mock. And this very day, God is handing you over to me, and I'm about to kill you and cut your head off and serve your, serve your body and the bodies of your Philistine buddies to the crows and coyotes. The whole earth will know that there is an extraordinary God in Israel. And everyone gathered here will learn that God doesn't save by the means of sword or spear, but the battle belongs to God, and he's handing you over to me on a platter. Now... That's how we fight. That's the word. He didn't say, oh, I see myself as this grasshopper. Oh, my God, you see how big this guy? No. Look, you may feel that inside. It's like, listen, you, here's what the word of God says. No, I'm telling you, I was up last night, and Linda, you kept the TV on. You kept me up downstairs. Anyway, I came downstairs. It was like, three, you know, 2, two to 3.30, and stuff was going on in my mind. Can you, I mean, here I'm about to preach this message, and it's like, oh, my God. And I said, in the name, and I just start rattling off the scriptures. Not by might, not by power, it's by the spirit of the living God, and blah, blah, blah. You know, just quoting the word and quoting the word and quoting the word until I was able to go back to sleep. He doesn't let up. But neither does God. Because I got the victory, because I woke up in peace. Right? So... And we see how God works through. This is how we war. It's, yes, the enemy's going to come against you. Yes, he's going to say to you, it's never going to happen. Daniel's never going to get up. He's going to tell you, you're never going to get a new house. And you are, David. The Lord says you're going to own your house. But you're never going to get your house. You're never going to get a wife. You're never going to get a husband. I, I defy that in Jesus' name. Because if the Lord's in it, I mean, that's why we have to get the word of the Lord. That's why we need to get before the presence of the Lord and hear what he's saying. Amen? So which is it? You're going to see yourself as a grasshopper or you're going to see yourself as one that's going to kick devil behind? That, because the Bible says that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm not defeated. It says the greater one's in me. Right? So... All right, let's see where I want to go. Everybody alive? We're good? <laughs> All right. So spiritual battles are won, as you know, by the, the words we speak. Listen to this scripture. Now I'm going back to the slides. In Matthew 12, uh, 37 in the Amplified, it says, By your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. So when I read that, I'm like, all right, Lord. Your word says that we are victorious. So I want my words to reflect my spiritual condition. What's, my, what's your spiritual condition? What's my spiritual condition? Well, I want it to line up with the word. In Job 22, 28, you will decide and decree a thing. And it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. And then it even goes on to say, which I didn't type it out. And even the ones that you're praying for that are not innocent shall get saved. See, that's the power of our words, the power of our words for souls. The powers of our world is going crazy, right? But God has a plan. You think he's surprised by all what's happening? No, but he's saying, I want the remnant, the church to rise up, take the stand, know who you are. Know that it's not over till God says it's over. Though it may look one way and it may have been decreed a certain thing, but God's saying, I can overcome that thing. I have final say. We all have testimonies here of how God broke through miraculously in our lives. We have incredible testimonies. We can't let what the enemy is saying to us keep us in a funk and hold us back. The word has to have final say. 
Lord, your word says that I am the head and not the tail. I am not defeated. I am not. Listen, how in the world do you get perfect peace that passes all understanding? It's with the spirit of the Lord, even in the midst of trials, even when you're going through really hard times, because it happens. But the Lord said, listen, I'll give you peace. He says, perfect, in Isaiah, perfect peace will you have when your eyes or your mind are fixed on me. Amen. Not your... Not your problems. In Psalm 34, it says, oh, come, let's magnify the Lord. It didn't say magnify your problems. Right. When you have a magnifying glass, what happens? It, it makes it bigger. Well, the more we focus on what's happening, the worse it is. Well, does, did that ever accomplish anything for anybody here? I know it never did for me. So God wants us to understand that his words are spirit and life. That's what it says in John chapter 6. And Proverbs 23, 7 in the Passion, it says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. Listen, you need to really get a mindset of who you are more than ever. I said, Lord, I am really meditating on this. I am really imagining myself as this one. That Remember Wonder Woman, that movie? Yeah. Didn't you love that? I don't think Peter liked it, but I loved it. And so, <laughs> you didn't like it too much. Anyway, but she went around, and she's fighting, and she's doing this and that. And fight. Hey, we can do that in the realm of the spirit. What, why is that so dim? That was, that was a metaphor. That was a, a, a something that we can have vision, imagine, see ourselves as for men and women. For men and women. And it's that we walk in the kindness of God, the love of God, and understanding the love of God, but saying, listen, and the Lord's saying, you got victory. You're not defeated. You're not a wimp. You're not, you know, someone that, that's not going to cross over to the other side. That's not who we are. God wants us to know that what is every word from Genesis to Revelation and the promises of God are yes, yes and amen. They're for us. Amen. And God wants to wake us out of our slumber. He wants to wake us up out of our sleep. He wants to wake us out of that depression. That it, you know, in Isaiah it says in the prostration, in the depression and prostration in which the enemies try to keep you because he's trying to keep you down and you're saying, but I haven't seen anything. I haven't. Well, maybe you need to shift. Maybe you need to get some counsel and say, why am I going this route? Why isn't anything happening? Remember, God's not the problem. So if we see that that's happening, and it's happened, it's happened to me. It's like, okay, what do I need to do to shift? Where am I at? Am I not listening? Am I stubborn? Am I, am I my thought process is it idolatrous where we're, we're exalting what you think over what the word of God says? His word says, is not my word like a hammer that shatters? Well, the word, as you're decreeing, see it shattering strongholds. Envision this. In 2 Corinthians 10, I'm going to end, 10, 4, and 5 in the Passion. I'm going to read it to you out of two versions. It says, for although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulati manipulation to achieve our, our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. This is, this is what the spiritual way, you understand why the enemy doesn't want you having it. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. I love that. I love that. So we have to war with our words. And so in the King James Version, the way I, I memorize it, is that we have to cast down our imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now that word imaginations is reasoning. In Joshua 1.8 where it says you shall meditate on the word of God day and night. Therein you will have good success and you will prosper. That word meditate means to mutter, to regurgitate, but it means to imagine. All right. So what we see, imagination is very important. And our imagination is a womb and it causes things to get birth. And that's how you develop your faith. You can see it. So when you're meditating on the word, you get that scripture. You see yourself, let's say, like study the gospels of, of Jesus healing. Well, does Jesus want all of us to lay hands on the sick? That's for every single one of us, right? Cast out devils, every single one of us. Raise the dead, 
for all of us. Heal the, heal the emotionally wounded, it's for all of us. Well, can you picture, when you're laying hands on that person, get the word in you. I'm not talking about vain imagination. I'm talking about meditating on the word and, and seeing Jesus you know, in you laying hands. Because it's not us who's doing it, it's Jesus. See, we have to get our imagination in line with the word. Because a lot, how easy it is for you to imagine wrong. Let's say you get a phone call at 1 o'clock in the morning. It's like, oh my God, is that my child calling me, right? I mean, how many, right? Does that only happen to me? You know, you can imagine something negative right away. But why can't we just imagine the truth? Well, praise God. You know, someone's calling and telling me, I just won $10 million. <laughs> praise God. Like why, right? Don't, doesn't our mind just go to the negative all the time? If I say a red apple, can you see it? If I say you're victorious, can you see you victorious? All right. So words paint pictures in our mind. Can you imagine breakthrough? Can you imagine your mortgage paid? Can you imagine you walking in total and divine health? Can you imagine breakthrough in your life and not defeat? Can you imagine you walking with health and joy, the joy of the Lord, your strength? So worry is meditation going in the wrong direction. Isn't it easy to worry? Is it just me or is it easy to worry, right? I mean, we can all worry very easily. Like, oh my God, the, you know, you see something. Last night when I was up, because the TV kept me up, but last night when I was up, <laughs> when I was up, I know I was going to text you to say, wake up. But anyway, <laughs> I forgave her. But, but then I'm sitting there and I hear a noise. And I'm like, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my God, is someone trying to break in? And I, I, mean, I said, maybe that's why I'm awake. That was what I thought. But no one tried to break in, and it was fine. It was just a branch. But you see how we get? You know, we, we think negative right away. So if our imagination isn't centered on the word or his love, we go off in the wrong direction. It's so easy. So when that happens, just, just, just take that turn, go right back to the word. No, here's what the word says. Because there's a war. It doesn't mean that you're not a strong Christian. Just don't go off in that direction. Just bring it back. Lord, you can heal my marriage. You can restore love unlike anything I've ever experienced. He can do it. He's a miracle working God. So judge your thoughts. Are they going against the word of God? Where are you at? I said, Lord, I am not going to magnify what's not happening. I'm going to magnify the greatness of who you are. You know, can you see breakthrough? Can you see your business prospering? Yes. Are you decreeing the word? Do you have scripture for your business? Yes. He says it delights him to see his servants prosper. Yes. Wealth and riches are in your home. And it says your seed shall be mighty. Your seed may be wayward, but the Bible says that your seed shall be mighty. It says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You see, what's the word of God? What, what's the moment that thought comes? You have something that, that, that overrides that other thought. If not, you're gonna, that's where it's, what's going to bring you down. So praise God. Amen. So let's see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll end here. Let's just stand. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ooh, the Lord says that we are the head and not the tail. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Oh, I actually wrote out some decrees. Um, on one of them, it says here, uh, you know, we want to keep our thoughts upon the Lord. Oh, I'll just read. I'll just say it. Just say, Lord, I am whole and healthy. I have the mind of Christ. I am more than a conqueror. And I have that dynamite power working within me. I will not allow fear or intimidation to hold me back. I will not listen to fear or intimidation. I break my ties with you. I thank you, Lord that you called me to be victorious and a conqueror and a dread champion. I thank you, Lord, that I am a, a wonderful parent and my kids will call me blessed. I thank you, Lord, that I have strategy and wisdom from you, that you will train my hands to war and my fingers to battle. 
I will know how to strategize in business. And I will expect breakthrough. I speak to my finances. And I command it to increase in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Lord, your word says that I should speak to that mountain, to that obstacle, and command it to fall into the sea. I command barrenness to fall into the sea, barrenness of health, barrenness of relationship, barrenness of, of, of famine, I meant uh, of, of being in famine, but barrenness of financial famine. I command it to fall into the sea. Lord, for those that, that are believing you for marriage, for say, I'm believing God for marriage. And I command doubt and unbelief to fall into the sea. And I decree breakthrough. I will not allow the obstacles the giants hold me back any longer. I will fulfill the purpose and the destiny that God has for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, praise God. So, you know, again, you're, you're, you're powerful. You're all powerful, and I need you to see yourself as powerful. So... If you need prayer here today, we have a prayer team. Oh, we don't have, we have, what do we have? Prophetic team, but I want you to march up here and decree that I am powerful. Actually, why don't you give the person praying for your word? Let's switch that up. Amen. Because you know what? Sometimes you just come for what you can get. How about you giving sometimes? Because that will cause breakthrough too. Amen. So Lord, we just thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, oh God, that we are a force to be reckoned with. We thank you, Lord, that we are dread champions that will decree that thing and it shall be established unto us. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for that we have your eyes, your mindset, that we are a prophetic people, that we are dynamite. We have that dunamis ecstasy of power working and living within us, oh God. We are not a grasshopper. And Lord, I, I repent if at any times I saw myself defeated or as a grasshopper. But today, we decree that we are champions in him in Jesus name. Amen.